Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the anastomosis that occurs around the elbow. And anastomosis is just defined by where two blood vessels will meet, and they provide something known as a collateral circulation. Now, this is going to be important for a couple of reasons. One is that a collateral circulation provides you in normal physiological situations where if you're compressing on one of the vessels, you still have circulation to that joint via other vessels. And the second is gonna be obviously in surgical procedures, which is why we're showing you this now. If you ligate one of these arteries, you can rest assured that you'll still get blood supply to the elbow joint if you have to ligate an artery uh, in, in, in certain procedures. So what we're going to do is first, I want to explain to you that whenever you're learning something like this, where it's complex type of arteries or any arteries for that matter, or nerves, you should draw this out first. You should draw this out first. So you want to map this and then you can look at your 3D anatomy software and then from there you move on to the cadavers. Don't try to stare at a picture and try to figure this out. You're going to drive yourself insane. All right, so let's begin. So what I want to do is first I'm going to just draw out our basic the major blood vessels that come down from the brachial region into the antibrachial region. And we start off with this one artery that's rather large and it's going to be called the brachial artery. And as you know, the brachial artery comes down into the cubital fossa region and then it's going to split into ulnar artery, which is following the ulna bone. And then we also have the radial artery, which follows the radius. Okay, so this should be not new to you. You should know this information by now, right? And then the next thing that you've learned probably recently, this might not be something that you've learned in the past, but there's another artery here that's going to come off of the brachial artery, kind of up high, and this is going to be called the deep brachial artery or profunda brachii. So let me just kind of represent that we're behind the humerus here, and this, is, this artery is going to feed the posterior compartment of the arm. Okay, so it's gonna be the posterior compartment of the arm. So now that I have these arteries, all drawn out. Let me label them so that you don't get confused. So this is the brachial artery. This is going to be the ulna artery. This is going to be the radial artery. And this is going to be the profunda brachii. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some definitions. All right, so you need to know these terms. We have one term called recurrent. Okay, so it's gonna be the name of an artery and then the word recurrent. Or you can even do it the other way where it's recurrent and then the actual name of the artery. I like to do it the way that I learned it. And then there's another term here that's going to be called collateral. Okay, so collateral is referring to arteries that are starting up high and then they work their way down. A recurrent is going to be where an artery starts from down here below and then works its way up. Now where this artery is going to come up, it will meet the artery that is going down, okay? And what they do is, if you can see here, there's a little kiss mark here, right? So kiss. And that kiss mark here is called an anastomosis. Okay, and this is basically what's forming that collateral circulation. All right, so let's go back and now let's go to our drawing and we'll start with the easy ones first. So what we have here is the radial artery is real simple, all right? The radial artery doesn't like to compli complicate things, all right? What he does is he says, you know what? Let me just send off this little branch that goes upwards. So if it's going upwards and notice how it's anterior to the lateral epicondyle, this is going to be going up. So we call this artery the radial recurrent artery radial recurrent artery and I'll abbreviate okay so it's called the radial recurrent artery all right so what's going to happen with the radial recurrent artery he has to meet up with a collateral right because he's going up so we have something coming down so off the profunda brachii we have this guy since the profunda brachii was going lateral anyway he's like yeah why not let me just send off a branch that comes down and let's you know smooch back here and this guy here since he's going to the radial we're going to call this the radial collateral artery. So I encourage you to write out the whole word. I know I'm abbreviating because I know that this is going to get uh, pretty heavy in just a minute. Okay, so radial collateral artery anastomosis with the radial recurrent artery, and this is feeding collateral circulation to the anterior aspect of the lateral epicondyle. All right, now let's do another one. So the ulna artery is not as nice, right? He has a little bit of more complex situation going on. One of the things he does is he sends off a branch like so, and I'm making it a little bigger than normal. And the reason why is because this is, and it's a different color. Notice how it's not blue. And the reason why I labeled it green is because this is going to be called a common, okay? So this is gonna be called the common ulnar recurrent artery. I did write this whole one out. 
So common in anatomy implies that we're going to split into two, and that's exactly what this does. So if I go back to my recurrent, we have a common ulnar recurrent that comes off the ulnar artery, and then the common ulnar recurrent is going to split into an anterior, and it's going to do a posterior. So I'm drawing a dotted line or dashed line because I want to try to imply that this is going behind the medial epicondyle here. But so these are both going to be ulnar recurrents, but this one back here is going to be the posterior ulnar recurrent artery. And this one here is going to be the anterior ulnar recurrent artery. All right, hopefully that you can follow that rule or that logic. So since these are going medial, these two recurrent arteries are going medial, and the brachial artery is located medially. The brachial artery is going to be the collateral circulation that will supply these two recurrents. The anterior ulnar recurrent, he takes a short trip. He could just go womp straight into the actual artery because that artery is going anterior as well. So let's ha make that happen. So what we have is we have a little collateral branch, and he's short, but he's also sweet because he's going to be more distal, and it's going to be a quick kiss, right? So this is going to be called, since it's a collateral, let's call it what it is. It's going to be a inferior ulnar collateral artery, okay? On the other hand, the posterior ulnar recurrent has to go way behind the actual elbow joint, and it takes time for him to get back there, so by the so a superior branch has to come up to meet with him. Let's jump over this arrow. There we go. Okay, so a superior branch has to come over there. So, so if this is called the inferior ulnar collateral artery, what do you think this is going to be called? This is going to be called the superior ulnar collateral artery. Okay, superior ulnar collateral artery. So let's back up. The ulnar artery had a common ulnar recurrent branch. The common ulnar recurrent branch will split into anterior and posterior ulnar recurrent arteries. The anterior ulnar recurrent is going to anastomose with the inferior ulnar collateral, which comes from the brachial artery. And the posterior ulnar recurrent is going to go way up to anastomose with the superior ulnar collateral artery. All right, almost done. But if you look at our picture, what we have is we have, we have, we do have blood supply to the lateral and medial anterior side of the elbow joint. But I only have so far blood supply to the posterior medial elbow joint that is behind the medial epicondyle. So now we need to feed blood to the posterior lateral epicondyle. And let's do that. So the way I'm going to do this is let's bust out our little green color again. And the green color is always going to represent a common branch. Right, so we have the common interosseous. And the reason why this is going to be called the common interosseous is because he's going in between these two bones. This is bone one. This is bone two. And since he's traversing between two bones, we call it interosseous, okay? So he's going between the two interosseous, and now I'm going to use a black color only because we don't really care about this next artery right now, but this is going to be called the anterior interosseous. And we call it the anterior interosseous because it's sitting right on top of this membrane here. And if you recall, this membrane here is called the interosseous membrane, okay? But then he's going to do something else. He's also going to send off a posterior interosseous artery. And the posterior interosseous artery is going to be behind the membrane. So they're going to be mirror images of each other. So if you were able to see through this, these two arteries are running parallel with each other. All right, now the fun part, or not so fun part, I guess. Just, but what we have here is off of this posterior interosseous. So let me label the, let me label the interossei. This is going to be the posterior interosseous. And this guy was, let's point to this, this is the anterior interosseous. Good. So now we can talk about our actual recurrent. So our recurrent is coming off this posterior interosseous because we had to feed the back of the lateral uh, epicondyle. So what we have here is we have this artery that's coming off from the back here. It's behind everything, all right? It's kind of hard to draw on 2D, but as it comes back, this is going to be actually going down straight back the middle side here, okay? So if I was to actually draw this correctly, it'd be going straight back on in between the two bones. And this is going to be called, let's fix this a little bit. So rate of recurrent was this one. And this guy is going to be called the interosseous recurrent artery the interosseous recurrent artery, and it's going between the two bones. So let's kind of fix them a little bit, all right? So actually, I'm going to erase this a little bit. I'm just going to kind of show that it's going in between the two bones. So he would have been going straight back. 
Now the interosseous recurrent needs to meet up with somebody and that person or that vessel is this guy right here. Okay, and this guy is going down the middle, the middle of the humerus. So since he's going down the middle of the humerus, we give him the name, the middle collateral artery. Middle collateral. All right, so use that logic. If you're going in between two bones, here's bone one, here's bone two, and if you're going back up in between the two bones, you're going to anastomose with something that is located in the middle of the humerus. Okay, that's my humerus. And it's going to go down the middle of the humerus and they're going to smooch. So this is going to be the interosseous recurrent and this is going to be the middle collateral artery. Okay, so that takes care of the elbow anastomosis and I'll see you guys next time.